monopolize to realize open your mind and find you had it inside this whole damn time we alkalize to realize open your mind and find you had it inside this whole damn time you had it inside this whole damn time Hey guys, hey Alkali to Realize family. I'm Gabby Zakara um, and I'm going to be hosting my first session today. So thanks for having me on. I'm going to be interviewing Eileen Fitzsimmons today. She's a real beautiful soul um, from Guatemala is where she's living at the minute. Um, she um, grew up not really fitting in the nine to five lifestyle um, and decided to just up and leave and it completely changed her life. So. We're gonna um, have an interview of me and her now, so hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, we've got Eileen Fitzsimmons on today. And um, Eileen, you've um, kind of grown up uh, feeling different, feeling like you didn't fit into the nine to five kind of like mm -hmm. work job and things. And um, could you start with a little bit about kind of where you started and kind of how you got to where you are and um, if that's not too <laughs> vague vague <laughs> question to start with no i might <laughs> it can be a long story but i'll yeah i'll kind of start from the beginning so like you said i um i grew up in pretty kind of like a country setting uh with a lot of connection to nature and um you know then kind of going into university and graduating from university and really being encouraged to kind of live the, the normal life. And so this is, you know, get a job, then you should get married and then you should have kids. And, uh, you know, I kind of just felt myself being pushed down this path. And I always wanted to live in a very free way, a very creative way. I never wanted to have this nine to five type structure. So I looked for jobs that gave me more freedom, that kind of gave me that connection to nature. And, you know, then I had some transitions and I got into a job that was more than nine to five to kind of please the, the family, please the people. And when I was doing this work, you know, I was just in like a kind of a clinical setting for about a year. Each day I would go up and, you know, I would hear people, oh, you're making more money. That's so good. You must be, you know, really loving what you're doing. And inside I was like I'm dying I feel more miserable every day I don't have any you know intention to be doing this this isn't what I feel like I'm here to be doing and you know that was something I always kind of questioned was why are we here kind of bigger picture things of you know spirituality yoga all of these things started to come into my life and you know I got to a point where um, I had taken some solo trips one in particular to Ecuador in this time of work and meeting people when I was traveling and seeing them really living their passion and being so alive really made me start to reflect on what am I doing? Why, you know, if this life isn't making me happy, why am I doing it? Mm -hmm. And so it really gave me the courage when I got to a certain point to decide to quit my job, uh, sell everything and to buy one-way ticket to Guatemala and to really travel extensively and figure out, you know, what is my passion? What am I here to really give? And, and how can I live this life in a way that really resonates with me, not just in a way that society is telling me to live and having the things that we should have and, you know, the buying, the working, the saving. Uh, these things just didn't add up. It didn't feel like a really authentic way. So it kind of pushed me to make a really big decision to figure out what is life and, and what do I want and to really uh, come home. You know, it's, I kind of joke, like not everyone has to do this. Um, it was a big journey and I ended up traveling uh, pretty much all of South America over the course of six years. But this whole journey externally was really just a journey inside. Uh, it's really a journey of coming back to myself to, you know, I think we're always whole, but of coming back to healing and to kind of finding all of these pieces that I'd forgotten and and putting it back together. So, you know, it was a big journey kind of around the world 
but that really just led me deeper to to me and to my authentic self and to the work that I'm currently doing, um, which is holistic health coaching. So working with women specifically who have gone through traumas, addictions, and really coming back to connection of mind, body, spirit. Um, I love working with nutrition. I'm also a yoga teacher, meditation guide, Ayurveda. So really kind of putting all of these things together to, to just bring us back to ourselves. Wow. God, <laughs> that's such a amazing story. <laughs> and I love as well how you said that you actually went traveling and it was when you went traveling that you found home because a lot of people, we, you yeah. hear saying like home is where the heart is and stuff. And mm -hmm. um, it's just interesting almost how you just had to like get away from your comfortableness to find who you are and what, what part of the traveling do you think it was that helped you like, discover that? Do you think it was the people you met or was it just like getting out of your comfort zone or what was it that kind of helped you uh, feel like mm -hmm. you figured out more about yourself? Yeah, I think... Um, you know, it had to do with both because when you leave your comfort zone, um, you leave those voices that are kind of the, you know, you should do this, you should do this, you should be living. Why are you traveling? Why are you, you know, all of the kind of limiting beliefs that people are also putting on you mm. when you break out of that. And, you know, then I was traveling and meeting more people just like me doing the same thing, really kind of on this walk, figuring out what they're doing you, you know, you come into a new dialogue, you come into other people really uh, connecting immediately on a soul level, like looking for something deeper. And so I think it's a combination of, you know, when you're out there alone in the world, you're meeting those people that are doing different things. And then you're with yourself, you know, so you just kind of have that voice of, of your intuition. And the more that we can listen to that intuition, the more it's going to guide us you know, wherever we need to be, whether it's physically in the world or whether it's, you know, just where we are, but in a different path or in a, you know, doing different things, different habits. Um, so for me, you know, it was, I needed to leave my country. I needed to get away from kind of the family and these beliefs that had been put on me yeah. and really figure out what, what my beliefs were. Mm. Mm -hmm. What's interesting as well is like when you grow up um, and like, say, just if you think about how you were at school, and the people that you knew mm -hmm. at school and the, the version of you that they remember or that they know. And if you kind of stay in your town or stay in your area, people can condition you with their beliefs of how they think you still are. Or like you say, your family's, yeah, absolutely. Hopes, yeah, you, your family's hopes of what they want you to become and things like that. And maybe mm -hmm. as well, like you say, then actually just getting away from all of that, being able to distance yourself from that type of energy and their thoughts and their kind mm -hmm. of desires for you just really helps you then figure out what you want because their thoughts and inf uh, emotions just can influence even your own thoughts and emotions and stuff can't they absolutely and I think too uh well you know from my personal experience just being a woman And, you know, um, you know, kind of to compensate for other areas of my life, I wanted them to be really happy and really proud of me. And their version of life is very different than my version of life and how I really want to be living. So, you know, for those first few years of kind of growing up after university, I still had that mindset of, you know, well, I want, I don't want to let them down. I, you know, I went to school, so I should be doing this work, you know, because it's going to make them happy. But you know, when I can see that it's not fulfilling me, um, that's when we have to make a really, a really tough decision and, you know, go with what makes other people happy or, you know, live your truth. And if we want to live a healthy, authentic, aligned life, we have to live with, you know, with what's inside, with what that voice is telling us. Mm. So when you mm -hmm. first moved, did you move alone then or did you have friends that you went with? No, I moved alone. Um, I bought a one-way ticket to Guadalajara. I had an initial landing to go to uh, my yoga teacher training. So that was about a month-long intensive, and I figured that way it would give me kind of a hub and a purpose. And then my goal was to teach yoga as I was traveling and kind of, you know, have some jobs that I could juggle and, um, and make a living while I moved about. So that was a really safe landing spot. And it was very, very transformative. Mm -hmm. 
really, I would say for me, that was what started my journey of healing. And uh, <laughs> I had this idea of I'll become a yoga teacher and then like, it's going to be good. Life is going to be easy. I'll be healed. And you know, it's going to make sense. <laughs> What a joke. That was like opening the door, like just starting to peek down the rabbit hole. <laughs> so things really started to get interesting after that. Yeah. Well, do you know, it's funny you say mm -hmm. that because we'll talk about it in a bit, but you're saying, you're saying that you do um, ceremonies for, and I'm going to try and pronounce it. This is going to be a lot. <laughs> is it Buffo? Buffo Alvaria. Buffo Alvaria. Uh-huh. Okay. We're also called the Sonoran Desert Toad. <laughs> okay, cool. So um that kind of thing, I've not um it's similar, it's like DMT, isn't it? So it's like ayahuasca and DMT, but it's its own thing. It's like a different type. It's like the five M A O or something, is it? Exactly, exactly. So mm -hmm. when you were just saying about kind of opening the door to healing and stuff, <laughs> um I've not actually tried I you ask for a DMT myself, but it's something we'll talk about in a bit, but the whole opening the door, I think I, I've watched a lot of like documentaries and people talk about doing ayahuasca and thinking that they'll just do like a session and they'll be healed and they do get so much from it. But it, when you do start healing and especially different things like that, it seems that you kind of open this door and then there's a the next thing and then there's a the next thing. And it's almost like it opens doors that you didn't even know were there. And it's the same with just bettering yourself as a person. Exactly. Like the more you become aware of things, the more you realize like mm -hmm. you're aware, oh God, I didn't even know that I behaved that way or those thoughts. And it, it, that is just the healing process, isn't it? It's like door after door. And I don't think there is ever an end, is there? Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> there isn't. No, and this is, you know, this is the beautiful thing. Like how boring would it be if, boom, like you're healed and you're perfect and everything is done and well then what i mean this just isn't life you know life is cyclical so we're always coming back to to things you know and revisiting parts of ourselves that we thought we knew but seeing it at a different angle and deeper and yeah it's kind of like this onion it's like you take a layer off and then there's another one and then there's another one and it's we're just so complex and our patterns and our subconscious you know beliefs it's like to get to the root of these things i mean you know it's it's a journey it's mm. it's a journey and it's a beautiful one you know this process of healing and and discovering and growth uh, it's just never ending and that's I mean for me one of the most exciting things yeah it is true mm -hmm. and it's also exciting then being able to help other people with that as well because mm -hmm. in your own in your own healing you learn like so many different things that have helped you and everyone's got their own journey and um, but mm -hmm. I think one of the most beautiful things about healing as well is kind of sharing that experience with people and um, the connection of kind of like helping each other and stuff. It's just so much nicer than trying to do it all on your own, I suppose. Absolutely. I mean, there's no way that we can, that we can do this alone. It's, we just can't, you know, human connection is, is fundamental. And especially to see other, other people, the more that we can open up to and, you know, ex talk with other people that have had these traumas or addictions or, or sufferings, the more we can express those parts of ourselves and, and see that we, we're all one. I mean, whatever life we come from, we've all experienced the trauma, big, small, whatever it is, we have these pains, we have these sufferings, they're real, and they aren't talked about. You know, this is why now in, in the modern world, there's so much depression, there's so much anxiety, because we have so many feelings and emotions that are being so suppressed without a really a healthy way to connect and, and to express these things. So, yeah. you know, plant medicines, just in my personal journey of healing, have been uh, incredible, incredible doors to really transcend and to go deeper. And, you know, like you're saying, to connect, we need this, this human connection. Mm -hmm. And so, We'll, go, we'll actually just talk about the plant medicine. Um, so mm -hmm. what I find as well is that obviously you were um, into kind of like perma, permaculture, is it? These things have not like, mm -hmm. is that almost like a lifestyle of living within nature? And it's almost like self-sufficient um, and kind of off grid, but also like an ethics of how you mm -hmm. would live as well. Could you explain a little yeah. bit? Is yeah, yeah me and anyone else that doesn't know <laughs> sure so this was some 
thing that, you know, I'm not an expert in permaculture by any means, but when I was traveling, I was doing a lot of volunteering. Mm -hmm. um, and so either through like work away or wolfing, I found myself on a lot of farms and a lot of these kind of off grid, uh, either communities or just individuals really wanting to kind of start their own self-sufficient system. And so this involved like earth ship building, working with different materials to build houses, you know, off grid, collecting rainwater, using solar, um, and then having their own garden. So this, you know, kind of whole way of living of just seeing, you know, we don't need to be so dependent on government or on anyone else that we can live in harmony with nature. It gives us everything we need. We just have to tune into that. Um, mm -hmm. It just gave me so much inspiration and, and connection because we, we are nature. So the more that we can live closer to her and just closer to the earth, um, for me, it's, it's a massive, massive pathway to healing. Just, mm -hmm. you know, being in nature and kind of coming back to our true root. Mm -hmm. Cause I mm. believe that we, there is like a plant for every type of healing that's needed. And a lot of people, Absolutely. yeah, and I've, I've heard, well, not a lot of people, I've heard certain people say that, you know, you shouldn't need to rely on like other kind of like uh, conscious, uh, consciousness, like altering substances to try and like heal or experience the divine and things. But these, these things, we, we should have like a symbiotic nature with everything. And these things um, mm -hmm. have been put here for our aid and they've been put here to, for us to work together like the different types of plants and and the food in your like local environment it helps you kind of like live within that environment like if you if, if you eat seasonal then it kind of helps you stay in mm -hmm. nature I think so I think that the more like you say the more we get to nature and realize that the, we could have such a beautiful relationship with plants that a lot of people mm -hmm. don't know about yet it's a really important mm -hmm. thing Absolutely. And, you know, I do believe, you know, like food is medicine and these plants are, are here for something. And so, you know, the, you know, psychedelic plants or these kind of things, maybe it's not for everyone and I'm not saying everyone should do it, but to be honest, where we are in society, we're living very disconnected from our true reality, our true essence. And so these plants, bring us back into connection with who we are and really understanding oneself, our, you know, our unconscious beliefs. And, you know, of course, I think the goal is to not um, go to a plant medicine, maybe every time we need something yeah. to become more self-sufficient, but initially to really bring us back into our, you know, true selves and to deal with trauma or depression or things like this they they have incredible results mm -hmm. you know and i'm not saying it's for everyone or that we should always be doing it because you know little by little we learn to through other practices through mindfulness through intuitive eating through yoga meditation you know to create this state of harmony but i mean these plants are teachers and mm -hmm. with respect in the right setting with intention they have incredible incredible results yeah definitely so with your ceremonies then are they like kind of like uh, guided with like um you know, like kind of, you know how you'd see the ayahuasca ceremonies, they've got like the shaman and they're doing all the energy work as well. Uh, are the mm -hmm. ceremonies that you do is similar in that sense where it's all like properly done, like, you know, say back in the UK, if people were deciding whether to do that ayahuasca, you could either go to South America and go into a rainforest and do it, or you could do it in someone's, say, lounge somewhere. But do you think that mm -hmm. these settings of it being like with proper shamans or proper healers and in the rainforest and out in nature, it's more important to do it that way in terms of respecting and, and tapping into the nature spirits of the plant? So, well, the, so the bufo alvarius, the medicine that um, my partner and I work with, is very different than the ayahuasca. And, you know, there is a lot lot of country around believe that it should be in the setting where the plant is growing or where the medicine is from um you know and i think that's great i do believe that you'll receive a different connection and a different wisdom if you're let's say in the jungle of peru drinking ayahuasca with the shamans then you know maybe more in a clinical setting it will be a different experience not to say one is better than the other um 
because there's a space for both. And maybe you don't have the time or the finances or the comfort to, to make that journey. Yeah. And I don't think that you should be limited if there's a safe, you know, way that you can, that you can also be doing it. So with the ceremonies that we're doing with the Bufal Barrios, uh, this is a toad that lives in the Sonoran Desert in Mexico. Right. And so, <laughs> yeah, it's an incredible animal. So it's very different than ayahuasca. Yeah. Uh, like you were saying, there is DMT in ayahuasca mm. um, and in other plants, in a lot of other plants and a lot of other mammals. Uh, we create DMT in our body, in the pineal gland, in the lungs. This is why they call it the spirit molecule because it's really connecting, a, you know, us with everything. With 5-MeO-DMT, uh, they sometimes call it the God molecule. It's uh, activating also serotonin, melanin in the brain, and also bringing us back to our nature, but in a very profound way. With DMT, uh, if you're smoking or drinking, you're still kind of the observer, having the experience. Uh, it can be very, you know, visual. You can have visions. You can see spirits. Um, but there's still that distinction of me, you know, kind of in my body and and having this experience. Mm-hmm. With bufo, uh, when you smoke the medicine, it's inhaled. It's an immediate connection to source, and it's activating parts of the brain where kind of shutting off the ego, and you become everything. And it's really hard to even put into words, but essentially, it's a higher connection where you you are everything. There's no ego. There's no I. Uh, it's one. It's a union everything is so it's a very very deep very profound very strong medicine but in the right setting uh with the right mindset uh it's one of the most profound experiences that you can have wow (laughs) it sounds (laughs) sounds amazing like i said i've not tried any of them and and it's something that my ayahuasca and dmt are both things that i feel like have been really interested in but I've also heard that you almost like need a, a real calling for it and it'll come to you mm-hmm. or the, the opportunity will come if you're meant to do it kind of thing um so mm-hmm. I do believe that yeah yeah so do you think that's the same with the the buffo then as well a- absolutely this is generally um you know the the people that we're working with it's very synchronistic in this way we maybe will you know walk into a group of uh, people and um you know we'll start just kind of talking about bufal varias or the work we do and someone will say oh my god we were just talking about that mm-hmm. or you know my friend you know has been talking about this for a month and you know here you are so we generally don't have plans of where we're traveling or where we're going or what we're going to do you just flow. I mean, I really believe when you're living in your dharma, when you're doing the work that you're meant to be doing, it's not this forcing, it's not pushing. Things just come. The people that are meant to be in your life just come and everything becomes in a very flow state, very natural, very organic. So the people that we do ceremony with are generally feeling very called to the medicine, which I think is huge. It shouldn't be something that you're pushing yourself to do or you're, you know, really looking. Um, I think that these things should come with a sense of ease and you should have a very deep peace and you should have a very good connection with the facilitator. They should be able to give you a good source of their medicine, of their intention, of the space they hold and mm-hmm. listen to you and where you are, you know, maybe share a bit of, of your story of what you would like to experience. And it should be very clear and feel very good because any kind of experience, you know, psychedelic that you're going into uh, when it's altering kind of the state of mind, if you have fear, if you have insecurities, that's going to come out or that can be a path that you go down. So it's very important that in this space, it feels very good, very safe for you to go as deep as you can and explore because it's, you know, it's ultimately an experience of love. This is the space that we want to hold to really allow people to, to awaken in a very deep way. Uh, Mm -hmm. So yeah, there needs to be a good relationship and, you know, a good kind of sense of trust in, in all parties, I think, mm. for these experiences. So do you think that it's something that people would come because they need in, like, healing in the same way that people might do the whole journey on ayahuasca? Or is it more the experience of just experiencing the divine and be- feeling like you closer to source, or is it a mix? D- no, it definitely both. Um, you know, we... 
we work with a lot of people in this medicine who have had PTSD, who have had trauma, addictions, uh, and it's absolutely incredible results. And, you know, there are a lot of people also who come with curiosity, with, um, you know, I would never say doubt, but yeah, kind of with this wanting to know if there's something more or just kind of a, a frustration in their life of, of their path of a feeling, you know, disconnection and, and really wanting something more. Um, so, you know, depending on the intention, we've had experiences kind of from, from all realms. So it's not really limited to someone who just has a severe addiction. It's for anyone. I mean, it's for anyone wanting really to go deeper within themselves. That's, mm -hmm. that's the biggest. Mm -hmm. And so you can get, you can be a beginner, uh, to these types of things and then go for the buffo straight away or would you advise having a bit of experience you can can you you can i mean we've had yeah uh-huh we've had people that have not had any other type of you know psychedelic or or hallucinogenic medicine and buffo has been there first it wow. is a very strong medicine but mm -hmm. you know with that being said again talk with with whoever would be your shaman your guides and you know to know thoroughly um kind of before the medicine and then also because these medicines they're they're going to have very little effect if you don't put in the work afterwards to really integrate it can be an incredible experience it can be you know hours or minutes and you know oh my god i saw divine i now i know why i'm here mm -hmm. but if we don't follow up and really integrate uh in the days weeks months after then we start to lose, you know, really the essence of, of why we went to the medicine in the first place. So mm -hmm. for us, integration work is huge, uh, you know, putting in meditation, uh, mindfulness, uh, a lot of other things. But yeah, integration is really important after mm -hmm. these experiences. And you were saying that it's almost like you literally get like fast track to source. So something I was going to ask is like mm -hmm. when, <laughs> when, when you do like different types of um, like substances, I believe that they open up like they, they're like little keys to different realms and people meet different types of entities or deities or beings through these different realms. And say at ayahuasca, a lot of people talk about mother ayahuasca or they see snakes and things. Sorry to keep comparing it to ayahuasca because I don't even know loads about ayahuasca either. <laughs> but, um, so is there anything in particular like a, a, a common entity that people would meet on the buffet or is it source itself? Yeah. With the bufo, really, it's source itself. Uh, mm -hmm. There aren't these entities. We we just experience oneness. You know, mm -hmm. then again, it's a different experience for everyone because we all have kind of like a different backpack of life, right? We all have different traumas, different pains. And even in each ceremony, you're going to be receiving a different message because, mm -hmm. you know, life is cyclical. We're always growing. We're always uh, learning, having a different experience. So each ceremony, is you know it's a different window and we're just infinite beings i mean what we have inside of us it's like there's just no end to explore and so you know each ceremony you're going to be revealed maybe a different aspect of yourself or a different understanding of, of universe of being of source but with bufo generally it is considered one of the most potent medicines in this connection to oneness mm -hmm. It sounds amazing. I'd have to, <laughs> I'd have to even think about coming in time, but <laughs> only when I'm called to. Um, so you do, um, yeah. you, you do like life coaching as well, don't you? So is that focused on kind of diet? Is it focused on mm -hmm. helping people uh, find the, a spiritual path? What, what kind of coaching is it that you do? So I call it holistic health coaching, and um, I'm working generally with women who have experienced traumas, addictions, pains, or disconnection from kind of this body and spirit, um, you know, because it's really a mirror of my life. I've experienced sexual trauma, I've experienced addictions, I've experienced kind of living in inauthentic ways, mm -hmm. and so I have, you know, a lot of confidence and clarity in in helping women come back to living in balance. So. Uh, nutrition, the food that we eat is massive, massive in who we are as beings because it's information, it's energy. So this is definitely a big part of my work that I focus on is 
understanding nutrition in kind of different aspects through Ayurveda, through kind of ancient wisdom, Buddhism, uh, kind of intuitive eating. And yeah, also really just helping bring back balance of mind and body because when we're living in a healthy mind, everything outside takes care of itself. So mental health is absolutely massive and critical. I mean, it's not about the external world or, you know, I'm not happy here, so I'm going to move back to Costa Rica. When we, the more we start to learn that whatever we're thinking, our thoughts are creating our external world and our environment, Mm -hmm. we have to do the work inside. So we have to change the thoughts. We have to understand what am I thinking? How am I speaking? Because this is creating the world. This is the energy that putting out. So it's it's, you know, it's, you're actively creating these situations. So it's a lot of uh, mind body awareness. And when we can put the mind, you know, and body kind of in a harmony, then the spirit, everything, I mean, healing just takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. It's really just about getting the mind. I don't know if you would say out of the way, but just back in alignment. And when we're living in alignment with the mind, then the body and the spirit, everything just comes into balance in a very organic way. Mm-hmm. And so, do you mm-hmm. and then also go on. Say. Well, I was going to say, and then also, obviously, um, because I have had a lot of experience with ayahuasca, with plant medicines, with bufo. A part of my work too is helping people either prepare for a ceremony or integrating these medicines. Right. So, do you mm-hmm. have like a bit of? So could you share with us a bit of a? Um, say, if you were to do a perfect like morning routine, if you could. I uh, don't know if you do a morning routine or not. Sometimes I try and do them and then I do them for a few weeks and then they just end up uh-huh. to forget, forget to do <laughs> them and stuff. But say if you could have a little morning routine, like five things that people could do to just try and stay grounded that day or to try and keep themselves aligned, like body, mind and soul type thing. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you think would be, say, five important things mm-hmm. you could do to do that just day to day? Yeah, I think morning routines are huge because, uh, well, I mean, first thing when we wake up, we're coming into this reality, into our world. And the more conscious we can be in the beginning of the day of the thoughts we're thinking, what we're doing, the more we really set ourselves up for success. Mm. So kind of a typical morning routine that I would have would be to meditate first thing. Um, Now I'm meditating for about an hour, an hour and a half, sometimes two hours, it doesn't need to be that extreme. This is also a journey, right? So yeah. e- even if it's just five, 10 minutes of breathing, of just connecting to your breath, of, you know, kind of not touching the phone, just being with you first thing, breathing, you know, taking a few minutes of time for that, drinking good for the digestive system to kind of get everything going, everything working. Um, maybe a few minutes again five ten minutes of some gentle stretching yoga bringing you into your body feeling that connection when we feel in our body we feel more alive we feel more present being in yoga can really put us in a grounded uh, clear state and then i think having a good breakfast um, even if you're not one to really you know like breakfast in the morning or if you kind of like to fast more even if it's kind of a later, like a smoothie or just a juice, just mm-hmm. getting some good energy, something, you know, organic fruit, an organic juice, something really fresh. It gives that body a good boost. We're doing a lot of cleansing in the morning, the body. So any kind of fresh fruit is really helping flush out toxins as well. Um, and maybe, you know, I love quotes, kind of inspirational quotes. So maybe reading an inspirational quote to kind of also get you in the mindset. I think those could be some really helpful ways to just be present, feel in your body, feel good, feel hydrated. And when we're doing, you know, the mental, the physical, everything just starts to to flow. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you say as well, like in your body, because um, something that a lot of people think or they um, try and do, and this is me talking about myself, is when I try and connect to like my higher self and, and I, I feel like less earthly and more kind of like connected to the stars and I think that's like almost mm-hmm. a bit of resentment for really grounding and being here I'd rather like be somewhere else sometimes but I think that the most important thing that you can do is to 
really connect to the earth and be here whilst you're here, like be in your body while we're here. Mm -hmm. and you can try and connect to higher self and believe it's up there and Absolutely. you kind of like we go higher but actually isn't your soul like rooted into earth and the more grounded you are the more you kind of sit within yourself and the, the sole of your feet being the word soul and it's down below and the more you're grounded you are the more you actually come back to yourself rather than trying to connect up high <laughs> is that right <laughs> yes Absolutely. And you know, sometimes either rather than saying higher self, I would say my deeper self because we can, it's very easy, you know, to kind of, as you're on the spiritual path to kind of, woo, you get a little floaty and you know, you start to live up there, yeah. but we're here, we're physical beings. Well, I mean, you know, we're spiritual beings in a physical body having this experience and we have to embrace that. So I, you know, I love saying kind of my deeper self, like this inner knowing, you know, my meditations are really about going inward and connecting to this place. Mm -hmm. And when we can connect to that deeper inner wisdom that we all have, uh, yeah, it's important to be in our bodies because at the end of the day, we are, you know, we do have this body to walk us through life and it's an incredible tool. So it's not about being so connected to the physical and like a vein form, but to be connected you know, if we have a body and we're healthy, I mean, the things that we can do, you know, it's incredible. It's such, such a gift. Gratitude. That's one thing I should add to the morning routine. Practicing gratitude is huge to change the mindset. When we can focus on three things that we're positive and grateful for, you know, the more positive energy we can put on anything, the more the negative, it just starts to fall out because we don't give it. So, you know, this positive thinking and like you're saying, being in our bodies, uh, it's really important because we can have this spiritual connection. Yes, we, we are spiritual beings, but we are in this physical, you know, in this physical capsule <laughs> as we're walking on earth and, and delivering our message here. So it is important to embody that and to really be present in that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just about like yes, staying grounded really, and not kind of letting yourself just float away <laughs> into the stars. Like there's plenty of time. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's a it's a balance. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's when it's like you know, just imagine the tree, like very rooted, like always growing up, always expanding, but also very rooted. You know, I love kind of that symbolism yeah. of we need to be present, we need that groundedness, and we also need to kind of have the mind open and to grow and to learn and to know that. I mean, look at nature. Again, coming back to nature, everything is growing. Look at the trees, look at the flowers. Everything is blooming and then dying and then coming back. I mean, we're the same. You know, we're always in this state of, of continual expansion and movement. So it's important to brace, embrace kind of the both elements. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And something that uh, I heard like recently, which I thought was really cute, is like, obviously, I've got into health this past year. I'm like, I'm vegan, but I'm eating raw at the minute. And when I'm eating raw, mm -hmm. like I can't tell you how much the difference is like night and day compared to eating cooked food. <laughs> and also just feeling mm -hmm. connected to like the nature and the earth and just feeling more spiritual. It's, it's strange. Do you, are you like, are you eating raw or have you had times when you're like eating raw food? It's crazy, the difference. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I have. Um, I don't have right now any, I would say, particular diet. I'm mostly vegan every now and then where we live. Uh, there are some, you know, neighbors that have eggs. So maybe every now and then we'll do something. Um, I think it's important because we're also different in our body types mm -hmm. and we're always changing to kind of learn to to eat with that intuition and how, how it feels right in the moment where we are in our phase of life. Mm. but 100% the more fresh vegetables fresh fruits we can eat uh, the really the more prana that it has and like you're saying I mean you feel that it's like electricity um, yeah. we just did uh, my partner and I a five-day raw you know raw juice cleanse and nice. coconut water and you know raw juices and we're like Whoa! I mean you just feel electric you know you feel so alive and so much energy and you know I'm not saying that you know, I can live on, on just juices. No, but, you know, again, to kind of come back and trust the body and wow, like you're saying, when you can connect with the food that you're eating and kind of give gratitude, it's, yeah, it's unbelievable. It plays such a huge part. Yeah. Even like when you're saying the gratitude or even just like putting your intention in the food and stuff, it's something that I've like mm -hmm. tried to start again. I've forgotten to do it loads of times, but obviously when you condition like 
energy you can condition your food to heal you yeah. in different ways and especially when it's live living food like it's got all the water in it it's not cooked and it's still alive I can't imagine the potential exactly. that you could have with with what you could like put in that in terms of energy and casting spells in it and stuff absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, this is, you know, I forget the, um, the Japanese, I think doctor who, who's done so many experiments with the water, yeah, right? Just yeah. saying, thank you. Um, you know, whatever energy you're putting out of your mouth, that's a vibration. And so you're putting that, you know, if you're putting it into your water, into your food, because fruits and vegetables are mostly water when you're saying, you know, thank you, thank you. And really feeling it and putting a blessing, mm -hmm. you're changing that structure. I mean, and we're water, mm -hmm. you know, so when we're, living in that state of gratitude, of thank you, of, of a high vibration, we are, I mean, molecularly changing our bodies. So yeah. yeah, it's a huge, huge practice that, you know, that we should have. Mm. I think we could all, yeah, kind of implement. And I think what I was going to say before, right, when I was saying it, it was cute, is I could heard someone say that our bodies are just kind of like pets really and we're like <laughs> it's like we're looking after these pets because the pets look after us like they house us and you could right. your mind can go against your body and you can eat crap and you can do things that, mm -hmm. is, that is like so against your body and all your body tries to do its whole life is just make you better and like heal you all the time like the poor thing it's like a little pet that just wants exactly to you <laughs> and you do and then like you don't treat it nice but like because I love animals now if I try and see this as a little pet I try and really look after it like I would uh, like a natural pet and feed it right and stuff and and then it, it kind of helps you in terms of grounding into your body and being here with it rather than like floating away like I was saying earlier I think. Absolutely I think I read you know or someone said once we're basically like houseplants but with complicated emotions. I mean <laughs> you know we are we are mammals we're animals and if a giraffe is sick it doesn't go to the giraffe doctor like it intuitively knows what to do and mm. we're the same I mean we know what to do we know how to heal but it's just a matter of the mind and you know coming back to that generally with any sickness you know if we give ourselves a few days water you know broth something like this we come back to a place I mean the body knows how to heal itself we know how to create human life we're not you know pregnant thinking okay now I'm going to make the heart and then the kidneys and then life is so intelligent and you know to think that our bodies don't know how to heal themselves I mean if you have a cut are you thinking okay now I'm gonna make some more cells no, I mean, we just have to get the mind kind of out of the way to let things, <laughs> to let nature just work. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're saying about the plant thing, I'd love to know what you, what you think. But, you know, because like plants have spirits, would you say? Because obviously you can connect to them when you heal and things. So do you think that plants mm -hmm. could have emotions in your opinion? Mm hmm. I suppose emotions I've never thought about, but I mean, there, you know, there's spirit. It, it's an intelligence. So mm -hmm. I do believe that, that there's a great deal of wisdom that they hold. I, mm -hmm. Emotions, I don't know. I mean, because it's such a human trait that we, you know, that we put onto things and that we put onto animals. I mean, but there are animals, you know, animals have emotions, of course. So plants, I've never thought about it from an emotional way, but from just, you know, a spiritual intelligence, they're, they're, you know, they have a lot of wisdom. Yeah, definitely. It's funny because I'm like, because <laughs> I'm vegan. Mm -hmm. If if any vegans say <laughs> that plants, plants have got feelings or whatever, that's it. You, you, they hate you for it, but <laughs> it, it, they very much well <laughs> could have, like, they don't have the, like, the same biology as we do, so they don't, they don't release, well, they, they do release kind of chemicals in a way, um, but like stress yeah stress chemicals and whether emotions are actually just energy it's just energy in motion isn't it so it could be a possibility mm -hmm. that they do have emotions but um mm -hmm. when you're talking about say or when i talk about the oversoul perhaps they are, are not of the ego or then they've not really got like the same emotional body that we do on a on a lower level like so perhaps mother ayahuasca isn't going away and crying about mm -hmm. all the crap that people have just dumped on her today <laughs> she needs therapy as well maybe, maybe right. they've got past that <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, if she has emotion too. <laughs> I know, imagine like being just everyone counselor and no one asks how you're feeling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um I was just gonna see, um so between the coaching and the buffet type stuff, what do you prefer doing or is it just different? Um, you know, it's just different. The the buffo, it's always a way to, you know, to really connect and to grow and it really kind of they both keep me kind of going in a different path. You know, with the buffo, it's a very spiritual, very, very high, deep, deep connection. And, you know, then with the coaching, it's to see the people and to really be connected uh, with so many people on this journey that, you know, that really fulfills me to see, and you know, in the ceremonies to see people that are so brave to coming and to sit with their fears and to really work through these things. It just gives me so much inspiration you know, for my personal journey as well, to keep going and to, to keep inspiring and to keep connecting. Um, these things just fill me in, in such a way that I, every day, I'm so grateful to be where I am and to be doing the work that I'm doing. Um, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine my life in any other way. I feel so blessed. Well, it's amazing, really. You, like, <laughs> your energy is just so beautiful. So I can just tell that anyone who does go to the ceremonies and stuff they're in like the most amazing hands and I can just imagine the intentions <laughs> and the energies that you hold and stuff are like I could mm. like I say I definitely would go there myself if I ever came to um, to <laughs> North America I'd definitely get come and see you guys and on your days off then what absolutely do you, what do you like doing on your days off <laughs> Um, I love, I'm also very physical, so I love, you know, being in the mountains or climbing, um, I mean, running, all of these things, they're just kind of organically woven into my life, but I love drawing, I do a lot of uh, mandala artwork, oh. um, it kind of puts me in that meditative state, so yeah, just little things, we have a dog, so just kind of playing with him and, you know, taking him on nature hikes or paddle boarding or, you know, swimming. Anything that just keeps me connected to nature, I mm -hmm. it fills me up. And I used to ride horses a lot, a lot, a lot. That's something that in the years of traveling, it's been hard to find, but I'm hoping that horses can come back into my life soon. Yeah, definitely. Because I've, mm -hmm. I've actually been um, watching loads recently about like communicating with animals, obviously telepathically, because you can. Uh -huh. You can communicate mm -hmm. with like, spirits and mm -hmm. stuff. And I'd love to be able to do that um, and like there's this one woman who just has such amazing connection with horses and things and I think that the animal human connection is so beautiful as well um, and I'd love to see that kind mm -hmm. of become more of a thing of people just being closer to animals as well as the plants and as all the whole of the earth and nature just having such a beautiful relationship with each other rather than it just being like us versus exactly. plants versus animals and not seeing how we can kind of work together. Ab absolutely. I mean, because there is such a harmony that, you know, that can exist in, in all of these things. We're not apart from anything. And so the more, yeah, that we can come back to, to living in this way of connecting with animals, connecting with plants, connecting to the land, I mean, for me, this is the future. This is the way that, that we have to go back to, not to go on a different topic, but we know the way that the world has been going. It's not sustainable. We, can't, we cannot live in a way where we're exploiting animals and exploiting the land and, and contaminating. We, you know, this is a time that we're awakening in a mass, mass scale, and I do believe that we're creating a new work, 100%. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's what we need. Everyone's saying, like, let's go back to normal. Yeah, I know. Like, please, it's for, it's for us to now create <laughs> what we need to create, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, this is the time to. I mean, it's a special time to, you know, people can take the quarantine however, however they want, but it is a time to go inside and to connect and to reevaluate. You know, was this job really what I needed? Was this relationship really, you know, making me happy? So it's it's a time to ask some deep questions and a time that people can really come out with a different perspective, um, 
you know, into the world and, and really thinking of a new way that they, that we all want to be living and creating. Mm -hmm. It's a big opportunity. Yeah. That's one of the la last things that I was going to um, ask you then was, obviously it's crazy at the minute, everything's like going on and stuff. <laughs> We've all got our like theories or feelings of what's going on and it's a big awakening, which is mm -hmm. really nice to know. Um, but for people who are like locked down then, and you know you're saying that mental health is one of the most important things, everything else kind of falls into place. Mm -hmm. um, would you have any advice for like kind of like people who are in lockdown, what they could kind of start doing if they've not yet kind of come on the spiritual journey or then they're, they're not thinking about how to kind of become awake? What could they maybe start doing in this time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, in this time, you know, going inward and if you maybe don't know what your passion is, just trying to kind of understand what makes you curious. What? Because there's so many things in the world. And when you know people say, well, you should be living your passion, that can be kind of like a pressure and feel kind of complicated. So just maybe even starting basic and what brings you curiosity? What brings you joy? And starting to kind of explore these things. And this is a really good time to come to a practice that feels good. If you're feeling really stressed, if you're in your mind a lot, if you, you know, are spending all of your time on social media and comparing, uh, start to kind of put the energy in a different direction. I mean, there are so many amazing, I'm a yoga instructor, so yoga is massive for really connecting the mind and the body and the spirit and, you know, kind of giving us some grounding, uh, meditation, going online, maybe looking for some guided yoga meditation videos. Um, you know, those can be really big things if we're feeling grounded and good in our body to, you know, to silence the mind and to kind of let the spirit, I would say, start speaking to us, you know, to kind of come back into that voice. That's the best advice. And food. I mean, I think, you know, <laughs> food is huge too. So I think if you can just, you know, ditch the, the processed things that aren't really food you know just eat more fresh vegetables fruits um things like that even if you don't want to make a big switch you know buying more organic eggs or just li you know it's little steps i think people feel a lot of pressure around food but just knowing the more whole actual food you notice a massive difference in in who you are as a person because it's what makes us up you know the food that we're eating yeah food is mood isn't it mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's massive, massive, massive. Yeah. <laughs> well, I really liked all that advice and especially the whole how to kind of find your passion and stuff because it's one thing that we don't hear a lot really and a lot of the time you really don't know what it is that you like doing or where, what direction to go and you can feel really lost with it. So like mm -hmm. you say, just kind of first starting with what you actually enjoy doing, what brings you joy. And it's like a really nice right. way of just starting. And, and yeah, like I think that, like you say, when people kind of go back to that, that can really start helping the healing and the spiritual journey just in itself in just living your purpose and finding out what your purpose mm -hmm. is. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, just asking these little questions of, you know, well, I like cooking or I've always really liked drawing or I've always really you know, been interested in graphic design or whatever it is, you know, if there's that kind of spark of, ah, oh, I've kind of wanted to know more, you know, I like dancing, listen to it, you know, and even if you just do it for a few weeks or if it just turns into a hobby, I mean, this is, this is what it's all about. We're learning and we can always change. We can always grow. There's no, you know, you don't have to choose one thing and then do it forever. There are no rules of life. You can live however you want. You're free. <laughs> so explore, you know, make mistakes, do things that scare you. This is what it's all about. Yeah. Well, Aline, it's been so beautiful to have you on. It's my first <laughs> talk and stuff. And I just loved hearing everything that you've had to say and like your energy. I can just feel it through the screen. It's so, <laughs> it lifts me up and stuff. So thanks so much. And if someone wanted to, like find your retreat um like kind of to come for a ceremony or if they wanted to like find you in terms of coaching mm -hmm. where could they find you well thank you so much it's been amazing to be here and right now uh, i'm on facebook or instagram and um 
Eileen Fitzsimmons is my name for Facebook, or Eileen, E-I-L-E-E-N-K Fitz, F-I-T-Z, is my Instagram account. So either through a direct message, uh, that's a great way to, to reach out. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to be in touch with Megan, well, we'll put your links um, in the bottom of the description in the video anyway. Um, okay. So everyone will be able to find you. Um, and yeah, just thanks so much for coming on Our Clients to Realize. Um, peace and love to the Our Clients to Realize family. Thanks for having me on as well, <laughs> having my first hosting session. Mm. Um, couldn't have chosen a better person. Thank you, thank you. So, um, <sighs> yeah, see you guys soon. Bye, thank you for connecting. Alkalize to realize the body is the temple, water is the source of life. We breathe in life and then we synthesize. This liquid sun will free your glands and begin to decalcify. Peer through your third eye, see through the lies and give your body what it's missing. We dehydrate it, and that's the human condition. But when you clean the body and believe the body, you set yourself up to receive the body. See, it's a sharp knife, that's the water of life. It's like a sword cutting parasites sights down the signs. It takes a certain kind of faith to know that you're divine. And if it comes from urethra, then it's alkaline. We serve in truth, and it don't matter how weird it really gets. It's the linchpin ascended masters to initiates. We alkalize to realize. Open your mind and find you had it inside this whole damn time. We alkalize to realize. Open your mind and find you had it inside this whole damn time. You had it inside this whole damn time.